Hey traders, Jason here from Levitt Brothers. In this video, I'm gonna talk about Wayne Whaley's toy barometer uh, for this year. Uh, so first I'll talk about what it is, and then I'll talk about, I'll give an overview of what it is, and then I'll talk about specifically what it means for the following year because we just got, um, we just got a reading on it. So a uh, little bit of background. So a lot of quants, a lot of people who crunch numbers in the, in the, in the market try to use uh, the performance of the market during a certain period of time in order to predict what the market's going to do for the follow, you know, for the rest of the year or for a certain period of time. So a lot of times they'll say like, hey, what, whatever the market does on the first day of the year, that has predictive value or whatever the market does on like the first, you know, week of the year or the first two weeks of the year or the first month of the year. And they try to look at some sort of data set and then use that to predict what will happen the rest of the year. And in a lot of cases, those numbers actually work out fairly well. You could, you could, you know, however the market does in January, there actually is some predictive value going forward. But what Wayne Whaley did is he said, why restrict myself to a particular week or a particular month? Why start on January 1st? Why can't I have any starting date during the year and any ending date that had any, that had any range? Why restrict myself to like the first of the month, the first of the quarter or something like that? And what he found, he found the, the date range from November 19th through the end of the year into January to January 19th. And this is this calendar that I have here is just a random calendar. It's not this year or last year. It's just a random calendar, uh, just for an example here. He found that the date range from November 19th to January 19th, approximately two months later, has the most predictive value of any other date range um, for the year. And that if the market, however the market does during that year, actually has some predictive value. So let's look at that. He called it his toy barometer. And the reason why is because it crossed over from one year to the next. So it was like, so he called it toy, which stands for turn of the year. Um, and then that's the Christmas time. So it was kind of like, it was like for two reasons. He's like, yeah, we'll call it our toy barometer. All right. So let's, um, so this is what the numbers are. It's, he called it his toy barometer. And so you can see here, it is the date range is November 19 to January 19. And when the, when the SP 500 is, does, is up more than 3% during that date range, you got a bullish reading. When the reading was below zero, he got a bearish reading. And when it was in between zero and 3%, he got what was called, what he called just a neutral reading. All right. So let's go back over the last 70 something years and look at how this has played out. All right. So here are all the bullish readings. Okay. Starting in 1950. Okay. So you can see here's the toy barometer. So all these readings, of course, are going to be greater than 3% because that's what they have to be in order to, to qualify. There have been 37 such readings since 1950. And then this, the last column here is the forward 12 month returns, not, not the year return, but from January 19 until the following January 19. So what you can see here is when you get a bullish reading, there's a negative here and there's a negative here. Otherwise it's all positive. Okay. There's 35 ups and only two downs. You can see the little table at the bottom right here. Um, when we have an up year, it's up 17, you know, the average is 17.7%. Uh, so that's pretty gar darn good. Okay, when you get a reading above 3%, when that date range from November 19th to January 19th, when it's above 3%, there is like 95% of the time, the S&P has posted a gain for the following 12 months and the average gain was 17.7%. So that's pretty darn good. All right, now let's look at the net, let's look at the neutral reading. So here are the neutral readings. There have been 19 neutral readings. The last one was in 2014, so that's a long, a while ago. You can see here all the in this column, all the readings are between 0 and 3%. That's what they have to have in order to be a neutral reading. And then you can see the forward 12 month is kind of mixed, okay? It leans it leans bullish, okay? You can see there's more green than uh, more green than red. There tw there are 12 green, 12 up years and seven uh, down years. Uh, and when, so when we we're up, you can see down here, the average is 14.4%. When the market was down, it was down like eight and a half percent. Okay. So it leans up. Um, it, it definitely leans up, but it, it's not a strong lean. When you get an up year, it is a very good up year, but when you get a down year, 
you know, it could be pretty, it could be pretty, uh, I don't want to say nasty, but it could be, it could be down by a bunch. Okay. So hence the neutral reading. Now let's look at bearish times. All right. So here are all the bearish times. There have been 18, uh, including this year, which I'll get into in a second, 17 up until 17 through last year. So here's the toy barometer reading. See, all these are negative. Forward 12 month returns, there's a lot more red than green. As you can see, there's only six green, there's 11 red. So there's only about one third of the time the market cl closes up. But when you look down here, this is the average up year, 14.6%, and the average down year is negative 14.5%. So what that tells me is that when you get a bearish reading, yes, the odds are you're going to have a down year. But when you have an up year, the up year is a big up year. Okay, so it looks like bearish readings um, are kind of synonymous with like some sort of big move. You're either going to have a big up year or a big down year. Um, there's not that many readings that are somewhere in the middle. Okay, so that's uh, that's the bearish readings. Now, of course, I'm you know this is this is the this is the overall picture from the you know since 1950. So I got to talk about today. Um, this past year from November 19th to January 19th, which was just last Thursday, we got a negative, we got a negative reading, negative 1.7%, which puts it in the bearish signal. So this is what we're looking at here. Okay. Only about one third of the years closed up the following 12 months. Um, but as I've said, when it does close up, there are, there are some big up years. In fact, if I, if I box this in, let me delete those. If I look at just like since since like 2000 here, um, you can see that there's only one there's only one year where the move was less than 10%. So to me, bearish readings like definitely lean the market bearish, but they also lean the market towards a big move where like every other than one, every single print since 2000. Uh, you know, has, has been huge. I mean, we have 14%, we have 25, 20, 36%, 20, 16. So when you get a bearish signal, there's a much greater chance that you're going to have a big year, uh, the following 12 months, either big up or big down. All right. So that's Wayne Whaley's toy barometer. We got a negative reading. Uh, it is what it is. It doesn't mean it, 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 it means that, you know, the odds are we have a down 12 months, Okay, but it's not a guarantee. And if we have an up year, uh, if we have an up 12 months, odds are it's going to be like a big up year because that's just the way it goes. When when it when it bucks the trend, it does it doesn't post a gain of like two or three or four percent. It, it posts a gain of like 15 or 20 percent. All right, hope you got something out of this, uh, and I'll see you next time.